What's up everyone? This is Rochelle from the Algebra 1 Tutoring Club. Today we're going to take a look at how to write an equation given a table. These two questions that we're going to look at were submitted by Chloe from Dallas, Texas. So let's start with problem number one. Problem number one says which function best represents this relationship? You're given a table, independent quantities, you see the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dependent quantity, the numbers negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. So here's the first thing you have to know. Independent usually is the x variable. Okay, think of it like I'm independent, so I'm gonna x you out of my life. Okay? Dependent is usually the y variable in algebra. Why are you so dependent upon me? So if you can think of it like that, it's easy for you to have. Okay? Now let's get down to the question. If you don't know what the word function means, know that function is another word for equation. So if I had to read it again, it would say which equation best represents this relationship. Okay? Let's take a look at the answer choices. This is so easy. So easy. This notation here, what our teachers call notation, f of x, this actually stands for y which is your dependent variable, okay? You're given the x in each one of your answers. All you have to do is substitute or replace all of your x values into each one of your equation and see what the answer is. It's real simple. So let's start with A, okay? A says y is equal to 6x. My first value for x is zero, okay? You know that when you have a number next to a letter, it means multiplication, all right? So you have six times zero, which we know is equal to zero. And according to your table, your answer should be negative three. Sorry about the whole little y thing. So this should be negative three. So I know that this cannot be my answer because my numbers don't match, okay? You got that? All right, let's try the next one. My second equation is y is equal to x subtract 3, okay? I'm going to go back to my original value for 0, so this would be 0 subtract 3. Don't get confused, 0 subtract 3 is not 3, it's negative 3. What do we want for an answer? We want negative 3. So I got my answer, right? No, you don't have your answer. You have to check your values until you get all of them correct. So let's try the value for one using the same equation. So we have, and I'll write it over here, y is equal to x minus three. That's what we start with. And then we're gonna do one subtract three. One subtract three is negative two. According to my table, I should get negative one. So I know that this cannot be my answer. All right, let's try C. C says y is equal to three subtract x. I'm gonna start with zero again. So this is three subtract zero, which is equal to three, not zero. And according to my table, I should get negative three. You with me? Okay, so C can be my answer. So out of a process of elimination, you know your, ha your answer has to be D, but try it just in case, okay? So let's do D. So this will be Y is equal to two times X subtract three, starting with zero. You have two times zero minus three. Two times zero is zero. Zero subtract three, negative three. Got that for my first value, okay? Let's do one. So you have y is equal to two times x, subtract three. Two times one, subtract three. Two times one is two. Two subtract three, negative one. Check. Do I need to go any further? So Chloe, I hope this helps you out, okay? And actually, this question has been submitted like five times. So I'm gonna do this question plus the one that she submitted after that. Let's take a look at it. So this problem says, the table shows values for the independent and dependent quantities in a functional relationship. 
write the function that describes the data in the table, okay? So, this one is probably a little bit harder simply because they don't give you the equations, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it, okay? Let's go back to what we did in the first problem. We know independent stands for X, dependent stands for Y, okay? The first thing you want to do is to find out that number that comes in front of the X. Here's how you do it, you gotta stay with me. You're gonna find the difference in each one of your independent val values, okay? So going from one to two, your change is one. How did I get that? I'm subtracting one, um, no, two subtract one will give me one, okay? Let's do the next one. Five subtract two will give me three, okay? Let's do the next one. Six subtract five will give me one, and then eight subtract six is two. Not hard, right? Okay, we still have a lot of numbers, still got some things to do. So I'm gonna walk over to the dependent side and do the exact same thing. So let's find the difference between these particular values. Seven subtract four is three. 16 subtract seven, I have to do it in my head, is nine. 19 subtract 16 is three. 25 subtract 19 would be, what is that gonna give us? Six. Okay, so my next thing, now that I have my values and changing my values for my X and my Y, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna divide both of these numbers, okay? Three divided by one. That will give me three, okay? Nine divided by three. That's also gonna give me three. Three divided by one. Sorry, you didn't put my three. That's gonna give me three. Six divided by two will also give me three, okay? What does this tell me? This tells me that every time I'm gonna change, it's gonna increase by three. So here's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna come back to the other side. I know that the number in front of the X has to be a three. So, so far I have Y equals three X. Is that my answer? Check it out and see, okay? How do you check it out? Do like we did in the first problem. So, if I put a one where the X is, three times one will give me three. What should I get? I should get four. So I know that this just couldn't be my answer. Okay, let's try the second one with the same problem. Y equals three X. This time I'm gonna plug in a two. So I have three times two, which is six, but I know my answer should be seven. So here's what you do, okay? It's almost like playing a guessing game. Figure out what you need to add or subtract to your equation to get your answer. It's just that simple, all right? So I'm gonna go back to the first one. The first one, I got my answer three when I plug in the one. What do I need to get to four? I need to add one to three, okay? What about the second one? If I plug in two, three times two was six, what do I need to get to seven? I need to add a one. So, if I go back, what can my equation be? Maybe, it's y is equal to 3x plus one. Let's try that. But I'm gonna try for a different value. Let's try for five, okay? Three times five plus one. Three times five is equal to 15. 15 plus one will give me 16, okay? So to recap, what do you do? Find a change in your X by subtracting. Find a change in your Y by subtracting. Divide those two numbers to find what's your constant change. That's the number that goes in front of the X, okay? Once you do that, try your values out to see if that's the right answer. If not, 
play the guessing game, and add or subtract until you get the right answer. I hope that helps you out.